Uh, and it's now time for the first conversation of the day. Being a Monday, we start off with career, a topic that uh, relates to you, a topic that will help you. We're talking today about securing global opportunities. How do you get a job abroad? How do you, uh, you know, um, go for further studies abroad? And how is this helpful to you? For this particular conversation, we have been joined by the director and CEO of One Team Career Coaches. He's, he goes by the name Innocent Keep Kemboi. Uh, who's also an executive coach and career advisor. Most welcome. Kongoya Sante. Um, my name, as you've said, is Innocent Kip mm -hmm. Kimboy Palugate. Uh, I am the director uh, CEO, and CEO mm -hmm. of One Team Career Coaches. Uh, so One Team Career Coaches actually is a career coaching company mm -hmm. that um, assists people from... Uh, from way back, because you know, career coaching actually starts with uh, even when a child is born, you are able to shape that child or that person uh, into a certain um, into a certain path that you want them to become when they uh, mm -hmm. when they become old. So, career coaching is not is not something that you start it today and you end it. It's something that's continuous throughout life, mm. because um, you realize, like in our nature of work, we coach people who have finished universities. I coach people who have finished, um, who have finished uh, PhDs, masters, and so forth. And I also coach people who are in primary school and secondary school. So coaching never ends. So I'm approached all by whole people throughout. It doesn't matter your level because learning and education is something that is continuous throughout life. Okay. So coaching starts from way back uh, when a child is born to it never ends to infinity. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, someone approaches you and tells you, ah, what do I do about this? How do I go about this? Or how do I, is it possible I change this, uh, this career or this course from this one to this one? Mm -hmm. Is it possible um, to, to shape up um, or, to, uh, or to change, uh, ex ex especially on matters to do with uh, education, for example, mm -hmm. which is our, our main component. Um, education, in Kenya is different from education in, in the outside countries. Even in Tanzania, even in Uganda, it's different. So what does it tell you about education in Kenya? Education in Kenya is one of the best, okay. actually, when it comes to uh, securing global opportunities. And many people don't know. The only problem uh, that we experience is that um, many European countries don't recognize uh, African education. So the only thing they'll want is just, to, is just to see whether you have the comprehension or the knowledge about it. That's why when you go to abroad, skills sells best or sells better than education. Okay. Because at the end of the day, they'll ask you, are you able to do this thing? And then you'll say, I'm able. Or you'll say, uh, if you say you're able, they'll give you a practical session. They'll tell you, I do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. So unlike Kenya, whereby uh, papers sell, yeah, when you go to abroad, uh, skills, it's skill-based, skills sells. Mm -hmm. That is why when you see even the government now, they are pushing for the CBC, the CBC and the technical colleges, mm. the RVTTIs, the, uh, the ones that you'll be able to learn practically. And I always even tell my uh, majority of my clients, even the guys who are in university and colleges now, as much as you read the, uh, the paper-based education, ensure you also uh, uh, look for someone or a mentor who will be able to assist you get the practical path. Let's say if you go to school on a Monday to Friday, you're in university. Let's say you are studying tech or uh, engineering or any course. Make sure on a Saturday you have a, a friend, a mentor, who will come and show you the practicals, who will work with you. Let's say if it's a, you're doing engineering or you're doing a, a course on electrical. You will be able to work with this guy and he'll be able to show you the practical yeah. part of doing these things. Mm -hmm. So career starts from when someone is born to infinity. Okay. Yes. So how, from your experience, <clears throat> how is it, how easy is it handling um, someone who's in, you know, primary, high school uh, as compared to someone who's uh, already in the job market and looking into 
no, mm -hmm. they are really not really decided yes. on their career. They're not sure where they are, you know. Um, first of all, actually, you have touched on something um, uh, that has been of a concern to me because, like now, mm -hmm. our company, it deals with assisting people uh, move from Kenya to abroad, either on matters job mm -hmm. or on matters education, which, um, which I always say it's more of education because edu education gives us a bigger uh, platform. Okay. Like, for example, there cannot be... Uh, one million jobs abroad at the moment as fast as now. But we are able to take one million students uh -huh. because there are so many universities around you, the world. Okay. Do you see that? And majority of these countries, they sell education. Like when you go to the UK, when you go to America, they have developed some of the best universities. And the reason why they have developed these universities is so that they sell education. Like we sell uh, coffee and tea and HANA for rain exchange they do sell um, education. education. So many of them, or many of these countries, they'll tell you, yes, we have opportunities, but first you must buy what we're selling. And what are they selling? It's education. So we always encourage more people to use the education platform to penetrate the market. That's when I say the market, I mean the, the, those countries. And then put your roots down. From there, you will be able to do all anything else that you want. For example, when you go to Canada, or when you go to Australia, or when you go to the UK, you will realize that um, immediately you are there, you will be able to walk and you will be able to study. So unlike in Kenya, whereby you only study and then you wait to graduate and then start looking for a job, when you are in these countries, you will be able to, um, to immediately walk time. and study. How does this happen? For example, in these countries, they give you like two days in a week to go to school and they have they are trying you know the online revolution is so fast mm -hmm. so they're trying to take the, uh, to take the entire system of education to become even online based and it's the same thing with uh, the nature of uh, work when you go to abroad you will realize that many people are no longer going to the office because you have been asked uh, this is your task for the day whatever you do it from is none of their business. Yeah. You as just you, you just deliver. So you'll you'll find that there are so many people. Even now in Kenya, there are so many people who are working online and even they are working from home. Yeah. So that is the nature of how things are, are changing. Mm -hmm. So the advantages of studying abroad. Two days in a week, you go to school. The remaining five days, you are looking for money. You are working. Mm -hmm. Although they have limits for students. Uh, the hours, for example, in Australia, you have to work around 48 hours per fortnight. That's in two weeks. Uh, the same thing in the uh, UK. They have limitations for hours so that you don't forget actually what brought you here. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you realize that people find ways to work. Because at the end of the day, you will work the physical one. Someone else has another online job. And you know, when you are doing a work or you are working online, nobody will be able to track you or trace you whether you worked at night or not. So you'll find someone who goes to work at, uh, during the day. Mm -hmm. At night, they're doing something else uh, online. So those are, the, those are some of the advantages of mm -hmm. taking people to abroad. So the question has been this. Should I take my child to the States or to Canada or to Australia when they finish from four? Or should I wait until they finish university? Mm -hmm. This is the first question. The second question that is always quite challenging is, should I resign from my work? I am working in, uh, I'm a teacher, mm -hmm. high school teacher, primary school teacher, whatever job you are doing, uh, military guys, we have so many people who call me and they ask me, if I get an opportunity there and relocate to Canada, should I resign? Yeah. It's always challenging to make those decisions because at the end of the day, it depends. You must call yourself to a meeting first of all mm -hmm. and ask yourself, should I do this? Before you call me, I'll, for, my, for my side, I'll give you the advantages mm -hmm. and the disadvantages. I'll tell you the difference between here and here. And yeah. I'll tell you that this, this is what you will earn when you're in this side, and this is what you earn here. And then there are things you will lose. For example, when you're in abroad, you will lose social life. That is very normal. Because you, you might, don't have your friends. You don't yeah. have your friends. And then the culture shock. Yeah. Of course, when you go and you realize, like, um, I've been in the UK, and when you go there, you'll realize that there are so many races of people 
Indians, Nigerians, all over the world, Pakistanis, mm -hmm. all, all people of, of all matter of, oh, uh, of races yeah. are there. But one thing you'll notice is that, for example, in Britain, the Brits themselves are almost 60 million. And uh, immediately you go there, if you go to a restaurant or any place, any social gathering, you'll realize that um, you are the minority. You will notice it because out of one, uh, if you're a black person, you'll notice that out of the entire crowd, uh, you might be the only one. You might be the only one. And some people will ask you, what about racism? Is it, is, is it there? Racism is there, but if you are keen to it, it never uh, approaches you. If you are keen to it, for example, I remember I could go to a counter and I'm waiting to be served and we are many, and then you realize like, um, it's like so nobody's seeing you. But although ultimately you'll be served, but you feel like, ah, well, how comes is it that someone else came late, yeah, but uh, they have been served? That is, that's to do with that. Uh, mm -hmm. The children now, uh, the other question, the children now who are finishing uh, uh, from four. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have solutions. We have diploma courses. We have certificate courses. We have diploma courses. We have degree courses all the way to masters. Mm -hmm. So I always tell parents, instead of you putting your child into a university here, let them go. Why? It's because they will be able to work and study. Instead of you putting a child in university here, you'll be able to uh, imagine now you'll have to pay for their rent, you'll have to pay for their food, you'll have to pay for their clothing, you'll have to pay, like literally everything. But isn't it even more expensive for them uh, to I, go abroad? When you take them abroad, for example, colleges in Canada or Australia, we have community colleges which are very cheap. You know, the problem we're experiencing in Kenya is lack of knowledge mm -hmm. because there are community colleges that with, with as low as even 200,000 Kenyan shillings, you are able to secure an admission there. The only problem is that if you want an admission now in a community college, let's say in Canada or in Australia, mm -hmm. you'll have to wait. You'll have to, uh, you'll have to, this year you'll have to look for an intake probably next year, uh, a year ahead, so that you get the admission. The normal colleges, the ones that they offer diploma and uh, degree, let's just say a normal university, oh. you will realize that they have certificate, they have diploma, they have degree, all the way to wow. PhD. Mm. And um, people don't know that a child is able to start from a, a, a diploma and then to an advanced diploma or even a certificate. Yeah. So we have made it, um, we have made people believe that the only way you can go abroad is when you're going for a master's or when mm -hmm. you're going for a PhD. They call it to further studies. Exactly. And that is what has been believed for so many years mm -hmm. in such a way that we are no longer aware that we have diploma courses for international students. So now the people, uh, now we are teaching people, we are now uh, killing that perception. And we are telling parents that you are, uh, your child, mm -hmm. the one that has just finished from four, Whatever the, grades, whatever the grades, whatever the grades they score, mm -hmm. they are able to go and even start from uh, a diploma to an advanced diploma to a degree all the way up. So that is what we do. Because at the end of the day, if you come and you tell me I want a school in Canada, I'll be able to assist you get yeah. that school, mm -hmm. assist with the entire visa application, and guide you all through until that child or that person manages to, uh, to fly abroad. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now, um, my next question would be, what are some of the requirements for students to uh, to go abroad? Because I know that there's this test that is re usually required, IELTS test. Is yeah. it one of the requirements <laughs> for every university abroad, let's say in the yeah, US, uh, the UK? Mm -hmm. First of all, actually, you've gone to a very, very, very important question. Because one is we have, um, we have an IELTS academy. One team career coaches. We have an ILETS Academy, uh, a caregiving and a support worker uh, academy, whereby we, we mm -hmm. assist these people get the knowledge and sit for the exam. So ILETS actually is prepared by the British Council. Mm -hmm. It is prepared, offered, examined everything by the British Council. It is the most recognized mm -hmm. uh, English test language in the whole world. So that means it's the, the number one. English test language. So, many countries, let's say not even many, because America, the moment it's America, UK, Australia, Canada, uh, Ireland, New Zealand, it means the whole world now. Mm -hmm. So the whole world now 
requires an English test before you talk of anything. So when someone comes, the first thing, uh, apart from having a passport, is having, is putting them into our academy. They start with the English, okay. English test. The moment you have that English test and your academic papers and a passport, now you're good to go. So of late, um, recently in a, um, Australia, mm -hmm. they brought in new rules, which I'll want to share with our people. Mm -hmm. They have put Kenya now on level three. For those people who want to go to Australia and people from Rift Valley, you know Rift Valley virtually now every family has two, three kids who are in Australia. Mm -hmm. So now Kenya is in level three in terms of um, visa processing. Level three means um, level one first. Level mm -hmm. one yeah. is an American who wants to go to Canada or an American who wants to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. The only thing you need is a ticket. Okay. When you go to the airport with your ticket, you're told uh, you are, but I'm a British citizen, I want to go to Australia. Oh, you, you go. You're good to go. Level two, mm -hmm. it means they'll ask to ask you, where are you going? What are you going to do? So you have to say, I'm going to study, or I'm going on a visit, or I'm going on um, whatever the thing that is taking you there. Mm -hmm. And then they'll stamp it. That is where we have been. Now, Kenya is now on level three. Level three now, it means... There are two sets of rules. The ones for the host, let's say I'm going to a university. The university will ask me for a bank statement, for an highlights, for oh, whatever they ask me, I provide. And then now when you go to the embassy, the embassy now will ask again, give us the highlights and give us the bank statement. So it means two, two levels of uh, barriers. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean like it's not possible. But it means two levels of barriers. For example, when a university asks you for papers, they don't come to ascertain. Uh, this, this is Kiambogo is. University. Uh, are you sure you went to this school? They don't. Mm -hmm. The moment whatever you give them is where they'll believe. But now, when the embassy asks for those papers, yeah, they, they are really able now to even make a, call, a phone call to that university and ask and them, uh, did, he knows, <laughs> did you <laughs> study or was this person ever there? Mm -hmm. So it means now it's becoming strict. And the more it becomes strict, if we go to level four and end up in level five, for example, Nigeria now, uh, they're in level five. In short, there's no Nigerian who can go to Australia. <laughs> and how does a country end up in? Well, how did they end up there? <laughs> how did we even end up in level three? Yeah, because you said you were in two. And then we, yeah, we are now in level three. We dropped, okay. We dropped to level three. Why? Why? Fake documents. We are using everything fake. Uh, from okay. fake papers, people are going to River oh. Road here, they just say, uh, I finished a degree in more university and then they take it and they want to go to master's and someone has never even been to school. To a de 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 degree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And then mm. bank statements, they've been using also fake bank statements. Mm. So someone just goes there to a cyber, they, they pull out something, and, you know, mm. so they noticed like, we are now almost, of course, Kenyans, we are now almost n like Nigerians when it comes to shortcuts and uh, Okora, Okora, <laughs> Namne. Kenyans, are, they like shortcuts. Even in highlights, I yeah. remember there are clients who call me and they ask me, like, is that a way, you know, is that a shortcut for these highlights thing? You know, I just get the result. I told them, no, you know, my, my friend, no this way. one, there is no, you know, you cannot bribe <laughs> a white person. You know, we are used to bribing so much yeah. to a point whereby, when we go to abroad, you think that when you're arrested by the police, you can... You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> I remember I was once arrested on a, on a my car. Uh, there's one bulb, you know, one light was not working properly. Uh -huh. And then I was arrested and then I was told, you know what? Um, first of all, uh, where is your license? I gave them. Then they were asking me, um, how comes you are... Uh, your car is like this and this. So I thought, like, I'll talk my way out, you know, negotiate, like the Kenyan that I am, I was told come out of this car and they called um, breakdown and the car was taken. I was told you'll have to follow, follow up for the car in, uh, to the police station. Uh, that's I uh, so majority of our people, they don't know mm -hmm. uh, what are the rules. That is why even some of our people are killed in Saudi Arabia and other countries. Mm -hmm. It's because we go with the Kenyan mentality when we are going everywhere and we believe like everywhere is like Kenya. So you go there and you get shocked. Yeah. You get, uh, you find out that you don't even know the language. I remember I know English. I thought I know English until I went to Britain. 
<laughs> the English I'm talking here is no English. <laughs> <laughs> you found the or pure <laughs> English, the original. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sorry, thank you. No, no, no. They're talking and I, I can't get anything. Uh -huh. So that's how, so how are you? Where are you going? Yeah. They have a way of, they have their own slang. Yeah. But now when it's yeah. in writing, it's normal. But now the way they, they talk, they speak I... They speak. They give me a quarter. I don't know. 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 So what we assure our people, is that knowledge is power and as one team career coaches we are here to assist you mm. we are here to guide you uh, we are here to show you the way in terms of uh, uh, career paths from uh, from high school to university mm. uh, all the way to you going abroad so it's always a process that is why i always tell people like don't wait until when you're ready you can never be ready you can never have enough money the game is not about the money or the numbers. It's about the willingness. That's why I always say, wherever there is a will, there is always a oh. way. So you just come. You tell us, like, um, start from somewhere. Get a passport. Don't say, where will I get the money? You know, the moment you start, God also joins you because this, he sees the, the desire and the willingness for, uh, from this person. Yeah. So get the passport. Go. I always tell people, we don't give passports. You go to Uduma. Uh, you'll be able to get a passport there. Mm -hmm. The moment you have a passport mm -hmm. now, call us or come to one team. The moment even you have applied, uh, call us or come to visit our offices. I'll tell you where we are located. And then when you visit our offices, we'll be able now to tell you, like, as you wait for the passport, these are the opportunities. Or start from here. Get the highlights. The, because the highlights now, the English test is, is almost like a driving license. Speaking of the highlights, yeah, yes. before we move away from it, what is usually tested there? You know, is it the normal English that we speak? <laughs> you know, the one that we usually get A at? <laughs> <laughs> because I understand people fail uh, in uh, the test sometimes, but yeah. Kenyans are good with English. So how how is it like? Kenyans are good with English until you come uh, you well, encounter the English people themselves mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, eyelets they test uh, around four things mm -hmm. it's just the normal things that is listening speaking uh, reading and talking mm -hmm. so let's say in listening you can gi be given a recording and then let's say the person says uh, good morning how was your night for example and then you are just told, repeat, repeat that. that? Oh. But now the accent is the British accent. Oh. So you'll be able to, good morning. So sometimes someone, Kenyan, especially those, my friends from Rift Valley, my brothers. <laughs> they miss out. Yeah, but anyway, anyway, it's an English test. Okay. It's intended to just test your ability to read, write, um, mm. and listen. Oh, yeah. So it's never like, it's a big deal. That's why we just coach you for around three weeks uh -huh. and you're good to go. Okay. Some people, some sharp people, someone who is sharp, for example, is able even to, we, we coach them for a week or two weeks. And then we just book the exam with the British Council. Mm -hmm. And then you go do the exam. And then there is no failing in English. Okay. There is bands. You start from 5.0. or It starts from average is 5.0. But that one is a fail. You need at least 5.5. Mm -hmm. 6.5 now is the normal, almost the, the main... Um, the main band used by many universities mm -hmm. to get um, to get the, the placements for schools. Okay. 7.0 now is for serious courses, nursing or, medis uh, or medical courses. 7.5, 8 and above now is someone now is really, really excelled. So every course has a requirement, has a different band of requirement okay. for highlights. So you have to, when you're studying uh, the highlights or when you, have, when you put you to our academy, um, you will be able to be in the academy and we have already shown you the course or you the course that you need mm -hmm. and you already know what band you need to score specifically for that for that course so everybody that wants to do nursing mental health or any media uh, clinical or pharmacy or any other course related to the uh, medical uh, world you have to score at least 7.5 and in that 7.5 make sure you score 7.0 in all in all the the test, that's listening, speaking, talking, and writing. 
at least a 7.0, don't score something less than less that, than that in each one of them. Mm -hmm. So that is what we tell our people. That's, what, that's why we are there. That's why we coach people. It's okay. because at the end of the day, you have to know, like, I need this score for the English test for a specific course. Course that you want to undertake. And then... How um, long does it take? How it long takes, is it valid for? It takes three weeks. And the, mm. the, the certificate is valid for two years. Okay. So they believe in those two years, you will have managed to go to abroad. Right. So on that note, um, when we talk about the cost, the cost is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because in abroad, in schools abroad, you will notice that every, um, every course has, um, has a different price. For example, if you want to study business, we have the cheapest courses. For example, let's say diploma. Mm -hmm. Let's say diploma or advanced diploma in Canada and Australia, UK. All these countries, they have almost the same amount. When you, when you check... Uh, schools, a diploma in Canada, a diploma in the US, a diploma in, uh, in Australia, you'll notice that the school fees is almost all, all over the same. Mm -hmm. So there is no country that we can say it's cheaper than the other. Okay. So let's say a diploma. What's the cost of a diploma? Every diploma course has a different price. Okay. For example, the cheapest, let's say business courses, a diploma in uh, or hospitality, diploma in hospitality and all that, the, the one for uh, cooking and all the cookery and all that mm -hmm. things related with hospitality, you will find that you will, you can get a school at, uh, as cheap as around 300 or below. That is what we call the 60% deposit. You need to pay 60% deposit okay. for you to get that admission. Mm -hmm. So when you pay the 60% deposit, let's say now for a course in hospitality or business, mm -hmm. let's say you'll pay around 290 to 300,000 for the course. That's the first thing. The moment you've paid that, the school will give you what we call an offer letter. An offer letter is what gives you all the, mm -hmm. all the requirements needed for the, for the course. Mm -hmm. That's what we call an offer letter. So you meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. You pay everything you need, uh, school fees, they'll say an highlight, they'll say this and that and that. When you meet that, mm -hmm. they give you a letter called, they send you a letter called a COS. A, CO, a COS is what you'll use mm -hmm. to... Uh, to get the visa, to launch the visa at the embassy. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. So what we are telling our people is that there are so many cheap diploma certificates, higher diploma, that's what we call advanced diplomas, that are very much affordable uh, for the children, especially those ones that just finished from four. Instead of you going to, I don't know, polytechnic or what, you better invest okay. in that child, let them go abroad, they'll right work there. and and study. So on, the, on degree, on degree courses now and master's, what we assure our people, actually the difference between us and any other, um, and any other organization in, th in this field is mm -hmm. that we sell the most affordable schools. Mm -hmm. We ensure that we get you the cheapest. If it's a diploma, we get you the cheapest. If it's a degree, don't pay around oh, 1 million. I don't know, I've had people going for 1.5, I don't know, 1.8 to go to Australia and all that. For us on a degree and on a master's, we can assure you, Mm -hmm. The highest you'll pay is around 700, 750, that's the deposit. And then when you had all these other things, visa fee, uh, I don't know, medicals, um, health insurance, and all the rest, you will realize that it will go maybe now to 1 million. Mm -hmm. So it means with 1 million, you are able to do what? To relocate from Kenya to Australia, yeah. mm -hmm. from Kenya to the UK, from Kenya to Canada. Canada, from Kenya to the US, New Zealand wherever you want, because we already have partnerships with all those schools um, mm. uh, in the outside world. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. So now um, we have talked majorly on schooling because you have mentioned that once you get an opportunity to, to school there, then job opportunities all open up for you. Yes. So now um, still on schooling, how do you get a scholarship? Is it something uh, that... Scholarships mm -hmm. are available. Um, in fact, at the moment, we are having something better. Mm -hmm. Because when you wait for a scholarship, scholarship, they'll want to sponsor the brilliant people in a f particular field. You cannot tell them I need a scholarship to do a diploma mm -hmm. or uh, a certificate in uh, hospitality. Uh, no, they so you cannot it's get. It's masters. always for masters, for brilliant PhD. people, mm -hmm. for research courses and so on. So masters at many times, we can assist you, yes, but it's always better when you've been applied for mm -hmm. 
-hmm. for yourself. So majority of the people that we deal with are those self-sponsored students mm. who, are, who, are, who want to go and, uh, and, um, and pay for themselves. So at the moment we are having a contract with uh, a company, a US-based company. Uh, actually it's good news because this company offers education loan, not scholarship. Mm -hmm. Let's say if you have an offer letter for specific schools, they have specific schools around the world, not all schools, specific schools around the world. So this is what happens. When you come, we apply for a school and we get the offer letter. Yeah? You give them that offer letter and then they'll pay for you the entire school fees mm -hmm. or whatever the amount is needed as school fees. But now you must pay them back, but on a long term basis. Mm -hmm. So what they do, you agree, like on a period of 10 years, as far as you're still in abroad, you will be able to pay them a specific amount of money, but now it will come back with an interest, but now it gives you a longer period of time uh, to pay back. So this is good news because at many times we have parents who, are, uh, who don't have many students and parents who don't have the ability to raise, let's say, one million for a master's or one million for a, for a degree or even the 350 or 300 for a diploma. So for those people now who don't have that amount, you can opt for this. Although it, it might look long to pay, but it's better than uh, staying just here and uh, doing nothing. Okay. It's okay. better to go and uh, work as you pay them mm -hmm. uh, this amount because now they have funded you. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you will be able to finish the loan mm -hmm. and you will have secured your placement in abroad. And that the, it's, you know, if you have even to pay, like, let's say, 19,000, because at the moment you'll, they give you a grace period of six months when you go there, and then you start paying them. Mm -hmm. uh, I calculated in dollars, it's around 19,000 per month. So you'll be able to pay 19,000 every month until you finish uh, the amount of fee that they paid for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And now, uh, as we come to a close of this conversation, how do you make a choice uh, on which university you want to go to in the country exactly if uh, do I look at opportunities for I want to do medicine how do I decide between Canada US Australia the countries that you've really mentioned UK first of all um, the first world is almost all the same when you talk about the first world that's Canada America um, UK the first world is almost all the same, all the same in terms of pay in terms of life in terms of education you know you mm -hmm. cannot tell me like uh, canadian universities are best than the american or the mm -hmm. uh, australian they are all the, the best the so level. what we do is this mm -hmm. you identify the course and then we advise you on that course for example there are people mm -hmm. who want the most affordable course majority of kenyans they tell, tell you give me a course that's the most affordable let me go there first and then i'll be able to decide Mm -hmm. Because courses, you can change courses when you're in the university. So you use the most affordable course first to go. So okay. that you can now negotiate what you want exactly now, your path. Let's say I want to do this and that, or I want to change into want to, and want accounting or so on and so forth. So we give you the most affordable one. It assists you to go fast there. And then from there, you will be able to, to make that decision of whether you want it or not. But at first, you are, uh, you're already there. But now what we do, uh, in one team career coaches is we always go ahead of you like f uh, before I tell you like I'll take you to uh, mm -hmm. to Canada I must make sure that I've been there for example to Australia I must make sure that in this school I know what are the opportunities surrounding a, a particular school so that when you just go there you will be able to start working immediately because I'll have given you my contacts within uh, agencies and job opportunities within the surrounding of that particular mm -hmm. place so that is the difference between us and the rest will be able to guide you beyond just the airport and help you settle down and we became your friends all throughout the journey mm -hmm. uh, of your uh, of your career okay all right interesting yes and are there um like fields that uh that offer more global opportunities than others yeah yeah there are there are in fact uh, for example in australia uh you get uh, you get permanent residency based on your what field you are in okay. for example in the uk mm -hmm. uh you get 
a permanent residency when you finish five years. Just finish five years there. In school? No, whatever. <laughs> just finish five years. The moment you are done with five years, you are given a permanent residency. Well, the moment you are you're done with seven years, you are given what we call a British citizency. Ah, so okay. every country has a different way of naturalizing its citizens. Mm -hmm. Others, it's naturalization, like Kenya now, if you stay in Kenya, and, Briti and Britain is almost the same thing. You naturalize into a country based on time, mm -hmm. based on a specific number of years. Okay. In Australia, you don't naturalize. You're given a permanent residency based on your career. So when your career is lucrative, for example, teaching, it's very lucrative, by the way. It's mm -hmm. like Kenyan teachers in the, in the 90s. You know, my mother actually was a teacher. So I used to be so much respect of some Toto Mwalimu. Uh, in abroad now, teachers are, are at that point where our teachers were in the 90s. We live alone now that uh, they keep abusing Siju Mwalimu Amats and all that. <laughs> at those times, <laughs> back there, teachers are very, um, are very, very serious, taken serious, uh, seriously. Oh, okay. Any course in the field of medicine, it doesn't matter whether it's public health, whether it's whatever the course is, whatever the course in the field of medicine, you will be able to get a permanent residency as fast as possible okay. in Canada and in Australia because they give you the residency based on, uh, on your field of, uh, of study. Okay. So many people go and then they'll be able to align themselves into this particular field so mm -hmm. that they get the permanent residency uh, as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Finally, for those that want to study abroad but don't want to really or work abroad or live abroad, want to come back to Kenya, does it give them an upper hand in the competitive job markets in the country? Um, it used to, mm -hmm. uh, but now nowadays it's a bit tricky. But it's in an interview, when you're going for an interview and someone, let's, let's say they went to Cambridge University, at that point that's an upper hand because that, this is a person who is exposed. Mm -hmm. So anyone who has studied abroad and they're with you here and then you want to, let's say, whatever university you went to in Kenya, and then I went to a university in the UK. Definitely, mm -hmm. at that point, first of all, it's advantageous to me because I'm exposed and I know what it takes to lead or where to uh, the world, uh, what it takes to know the world and to be able to deliver in that particular field. So it's still advantageous uh, as of now. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Innocent. I will give you an opportunity to say where people yeah. can get you right. and maybe a final word to, you know, for, for those that have Thank not you. really thought about studying abroad yeah. and the advantages of it, this is your camera. Um, Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I want to say thank you to y, uh, Y254 for giving us this chance to teach and talk to our people. Um, my last word is that put God first because wherever there is God, there is always a way. He provides and he makes a way. And then, as I always keep saying, um, where there is a will, there is a way. Find a way to start. Start from getting a passport. The moment you have a passport, don't wait until you have money. Don't say, I don't have money. Don't, uh, don't victimize yourself. Make sure you start, you start from somewhere and then talk to us. Tell us, yeah, I'm, I'm in the process of getting a passport. What do I do? We will be able to I uh, will be able to guide you. So our offices at the moment are located in Eldoret, um, Safina Plaza, that is first floor room F2. That is where One Team Career Coaches is, uh, is located. And we are opening up soon an office in Nairobi, whereby we'll be able to assist people get the highlights, uh, the, uh, the caregiving courses, and of course the, uh, the entire visa processing and everything related to um, study abroad. Uh, so my phone number is 0719-565618, 0719-565618. So you can call me, we can have a conversation, we can uh, find a way. Don't sit down, don't say it's not possible. Everything is possible because wherever there is a will, there is always a way. Thank you so much. Wow, what a way to close it. Thank you once Thank again, you. Anderson. Sad. Where there is a wheel, there is a way. Now you know, uh, you know how to secure a global opportunity, and uh, the benefits that come with it. That's what we've been talking about. This has been a talk on career. We're going to take a short break, and then Valentine is coming back with youth and politics. Stick with us.